This is a quick guide for the lighters. Um, I'm not going to go over absolutely everything, but what I want to do is give a quick overview of uh, our general sort of pipeline and how to get started on things. Um, so essentially, when you're starting out, you'll be assigned a, uh, a shot, and we'll, I'll send you a link to a thread. And here's an example. Uh, everything I'm going to show you is actually something I've already done before, so it's like here's one I did earlier. But essentially there'll be a thread uh, with your shop number and some details, maybe a little write-up for myself and uh, the previous version of the shot, which I can show you here. Here we go. Right, so this is what the animation animated scene looks like. Come on! All right now! Woo! Yeah, there we go! Yeah! All right, yeah! <laughs> okay, so this is a reasonably complicated scene. I'm starting out with this just to kind of showcase um, our lighting script, uh, which was put together by Wesley Howe. And um, this is going to be the major change as we're going forward from the kind of uh, lighting that we've been doing up until this point. Uh, so let me start it off. So in Maya, step one. Uh, in most cases, is simply going to be to. Uh, this is in Maya 2011. Is to go to your Dropbox, go to the lighting, go to the master scene, and in there you'll find a render scene. It'll be whatever the latest version is in there, and you open this up. Essentially, this is all the common background elements that are in every single shot already set up for you. Then what you do is you go to the reference editor, so file reference editor, and you're going to reference in the animation scene. Uh, now this should work with any scene that we've done so far. Um, we've been testing it quite thoroughly, um, but here's a, I'm using this one as an example. So you find what is basically the name of the, sh the shot number followed by d underscore anim. And essentially that is a stripped down optimized version of just the animation and you're going to pull that into your lighting scene. This might take a while because you're going to be loading characters and props and all, all kinds of other stuff. There we go. Okay, so that's all loaded in now. You'll see it here listed and actually it's like it's a little mini scene within itself. So it's got references inside of itself. There you go. Kill that down. Now. Literally all you have to do now is go up to our scripts menu. Uh, if you haven't already loaded that, there's a, a tutorial that explains how to load that into your Maya. So you always have access to our uh, custom scripts. And right here we have one called Lighting Setup. And all you have to do is hit that. It goes through a few steps and then it tells you how many layers it's created. Now essentially, see it says 14 layers here. That is because over on the right here, it's created all your render layers for you. It's done all the light linking. Uh, it's created uh, overrides for each of the layers for custom attributes. Uh, it's assigned custom shaders to specific layers. I'll give you some examples here. So if I go to the camera, and what we're looking at, let's find a character. There we go. Uh, one thing to do at this point is match the frame range um, from the original animation. Now, hopefully, I'll have put it into the brief in each case, so we can go frame 1 to 305. So go over here, 305, like that. And we can go frame 1, like that. Let's go to switch on the camera ranges so we know what we're looking at. And so here is character death. If I go over to After Effects, this is the comp here. And this is made up of lots of different separate elements. So we have death on her own. And she will look something like, there's the, uh, so there's the alpha layer, and then there's the full color layer. And essentially, that is what you're rendering out of this layer here. Now, all the overrides have already been set up for this specific layer and for this specific character. The script is semi-smart in that what it does is it looks for characters and props in the scene 
and uh, it makes decisions about what layers it needs to set up based on what's in the scene. Now these layers are, generally speaking, the most common setup for the, most of the film. Um, they won't apply to 100% of shots, but they will cover at least 95% of your needs pretty quickly and very um, fast, straight off the bat, as you saw there. Uh, so essentially, this scene has already been broken down, so we've got a death layer, and we've got her chair, and we've got the strap that goes on the chair, that needs to be a separate element, and then we've got another chair, the strap that goes on that chair, and the, uh, a halo that actually isn't needed in this particular case, so for this particular scenario, I'd be able to delete this layer, and then we've got various props in all their different customized layers too. Now, it's not expected that every single thing is covered, but it is most of the things that are going to be, uh, most of the different layers that were required. Um, so that kind of does most of the work for you. Then all you need to do is check that there aren't any extra layers you need to create. Like for example, there's another scene where the halo flies through the air, and that's not something we could have accounted for for all the shots. So um, that would be something that the lighter would need to set up themselves. And there may be one or two cases where um, the masking we've set up, see, the, see how the um, green, for example, here we have. This is actually just to render his hair, and the green geometry is masking the hair, and that's all already set up for you. So when you render this, all you're going to get is the hair uh, masked by the body. Um, Essentially, we're trying to create a bunch of elements that look like this. So this is the background. These are the beams. The bow, not visible on that particular frame. Some straps look like that. Cupid looks like that. Death like that. So another strap. Another strap. There's the gates. God rays tend to look something like that. Uh, here's the halo. <laughs> for this particular shot. Here's his hair and the wings. Um, another halo element. Another very small halo element from something that's on the end of his wand. We've got the pixie dust layer. Um, that's explained more in the handbook. Um, and another pixie dust layer and Cupid's tail. I'll just uh, jump us over to some of the things you're going to be looking for commonly. So if you need to find the handbook, uh, it's always linked to in your thread that you're given, but it's also up here. So go start here, rendering handbook, click on that. And here we have step-by-step -step guide. Actually, the, if you scroll down the handbook, you'll get to some very useful areas. Like for example, here is the settings required to get the pixie dust to look good in most situations. Um, if it doesn't already match that, it should match it pretty closely, but if it, the settings for the pixie dust don't already match that, you can go there and just tweak them to those settings. Um, we also have various tutorials for how to use some of our scripts and functions. And this is a very useful table that you're going to want to use. It's also accessible. If I go right to the very top of the website from here again, you can go to lighting lookup table. And this is essentially a table that gives you a guide as to what layers are, generally speaking, going, you're going to need to do and what lights to link to them, whether to have final gather on, whether they need motion blur and some custom notes. Now, the thing about this table is that actually most of this work has already been done by the lighting script. So essentially, you can just come to this to check on things if you need to tweak them a little bit. And I think that's about it, really. Um, essentially, once you've run the lighting script, um, a lot of the hard work is done for you. And all you really need to do then is think about where the lights are in the scene. Here we go. Now, in this particular scenario, the lights are too far away from her. Um, so the, the one th thing that we've done fairly commonly is that we constrain the lights. That there's this little set of lights here is under a group which is constrained to the chair by default because the characters are usually sitting in that chair and then all the lights just kind of work and look good. Uh, in this particular scene, 
death is away from the chair, so the uh, thing that I would suggest all the lighters do at this point is simply duplicate the uh, group of lights and then link them up to death um, in a sort of custom way. Um, another thing to think about is that uh, when you're doing a scene with uh, Devil, he's a bit more broken up in that Devil has um, a hairpiece which will, and the layers will set it up so that the hairpiece is separate, the body is separate, and the tail is separate, and those all get rendered out separately so that uh, we can do custom effects on them in the comp. Um, and Cupid, slightly less complicated, he has to have his hair rendered as a separate um, item. Um, or it, we do actually render the hair in the main Cupid body, like this, but we also uh, render the Cupid hair in its own layer like this. And that's because what we're going to do with that is layer it on top and glow his hair. And then uh, the other item you'll notice is he's missing his tail here. So we do a tail layer. In fact, if I run, press play and put dynamics on, I think we should be able to see that tail. There we go. So these green, ugly green particles in Maya actually simulate out to create a cloudy tail. And that ends up looking like this, which when comped into the scene looks like this. Anyway, that's the basics of it. Um, some lighters want to do their own compositing, and that's fantastic. I would recommend After Effects, and um, I can work back and forth with those lighters. Um, if you're a lighter that would prefer to focus entirely on just the lighting and rendering, then uh, that's fine too. Just let me know, and I can do the compositing for you, um, or hand it off to one of our other compositors. That's it. Thank you very much. hope that helps. Bye.